David's one of those people uh, who I found inspiring my own career because he constantly both respects and references what's happened, but adapts it to what the current needs are. He's relentless in his belief that we can do better. I grew up in Woodstock, a small town in southwestern Ontario. Four kids, a dog, lots of music and art, and a flow of interesting people. As a kid, I uh, was a collector. I collected minerals and fossils, stamps and coins. I read constantly and randomly. Uh, later on, got involved in sports, played multiple sports competitively. Uh, in high school, I also had a major part-time job with a musician's union card as a keyboard player with a rock band. One of my great memories is playing varsity basketball at Oxford. The team had 10 Americans, an Englishman, and a token representative from the Commonwealth, yours truly. He's a doctor, he's not a lawyer, but he talks like a lawyer. If he had taken a brief to the Supreme Court, he would win every single one. He is devastatingly articulate. With one or two questions, he understands everything, and he can articulate that back in a way that's absolutely inspiring. I think the establishment of the Institute for Clinical Evaluative Sciences is certainly a major accomplishment. A magnificent achievement showing how organized medicine could collaborate with clinician scientists in order to make healthcare better in the future. We've held an ideal of a physician scientist for a long time, someone who's a real triple threat. Good clinician, good researcher, good educator. David both expanded and raised the bar for that. He changed it from being just someone who worked at a bench or just did clinical research to someone who did the whole gamut of health policy research. And then I think on the academic side, major accomplishments as a Dean of Medicine at the University of Toronto and then later President. Well, the university has expanded. We've got more foreign students. Our graduate schools are, are stronger. Our uh, PhDs, our doctoral programs, they're all much ahead. It's a great responsibility to make sure that the university is stronger at the end of your tenure uh, than when you came in, and clearly the University of Toronto is stronger under David's leadership, and he can be proud of the uh, institution that he has left after eight years as president. He's been a tremendous contributor to cross-Canada discussions of how to make Canadian universities better. His constant, consistent championing of research that has impact and his role in the establishment of CIHR is one evidence of that. His mentorship of a number of young people as they've gone through, myself included, uh, to careers that try to bridge scholarship and, uh, and impact. He led the national inquiry into Canada's SARS epidemic, and this resulted in the creation of the Public Health Agency of Canada. And really finally even his report on innovation that again brings us back to not just how best to do research, how best to discover or find out new things, but why we're doing it. He is a profound man and he has yet much to contribute to this country. An outstanding physician scientist, researcher, mentor and public health policy pioneer, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. David Naylor.